And then what you're going to do is you're basically just to start off the process, let's say let's first drag one of the videos. For example, we can drag this video here and you'll see a preview. Whatever editing changes that you'll make, it'll show you the changes are reflected in this preview window, which uh, is usually called as a program monitor, but you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so this will give you a preview of whatever you're doing real time here. Uh, so let's say that I will put one more clip now. So something like this, you can move it along different tracks also. For example, we'll later on put this audio track uh, below here and you can anytime you can zoom in and zoom out in this timeline. This part is called the timeline where the editing will take place. So I can just zoom in, zoom out and this will just make it more, it'll expand the timeline basically. That's all. Okay, so you'll see more of the video and this kind of helps when you precisely want to cut somewhere. So the first question is, let's just play this video for a while. Okay, so this video is going on and let's have, go to the end part of this video. And the moment this ends, obviously the next video will start. Okay, so this is how this video will look if I was to export it using this button right now, but we wanna make certain changes. For example, let's say uh, when it comes to this video, the moment it crosses this land part here, or just before this transition, I just wanna cut this. So, small. so you can just click on this um, scissor icon that you can see this means trimming or cutting and the good part is you know whatever I'm showing you even if you're using a paid software or an advanced software or a very basic software even more basic than the open shot like a Windows Movie Maker these functions kind of remain the same you'll have the cut function in everything you'll have some transitions like we'll be seeing and the export options will be pretty similar so the functioning remains pretty much similar, whether you're using a paid software or a free software, the only difference in a paid software like you'll learn later is that paid softwares have a lot of very important and vital advanced functions which make your life very easy as an editor, for example, like the syncing audio video part like I'll show you later. Okay, but right now let's say I wanna cut this right here. Okay, So I cut and you can see there's a cut here and then what I can do is I can just right click on this and I can click on remove clip. So right now both of them were selected so they both got removed so I'm just going to press Control Z and click on undo. We only want this clip to go so and then I can just push it here. Then what happens is now this transition will be much before just before that part starts. Right, so you can see that we are just able to cut something and put something else there. Now let's put our third video also. Again this is a very long video as you can see here. So what we can do is, so let's just play this video. Okay, now one important thing will be, this also has like this sound of this rain, right? Now ultimately we wanna put this background music underneath that and let's say we don't want this sound of this rain music, or rain sound to come uh, on that. So we can, what we can do is, first of all, let's just cut this video, make it something smaller. So I'm gonna cut it here. And I'm just going to make sure only this is selected. So wherever you see that red highlight means the clip is selected. I'm just going to click on remove clip. Now, what I can do now is just make sure this you select this clip which has the sound. You can right click on it. You can go to volume and you can go to entire clip and you can go to level 0%. This, this basically means you're just muting whatever audio was embedded in this video. Okay, so the, rain, the sound of the rain. Now, if I play this, there'll be no sound. You can see, it just disappeared immediately, right? Right now, before we put this audio, one thing that I wanna do is I wanna put some transitions between, so when these videos cut into each other, so you wanna just put some transitions here, okay? So that they just look slightly more appealing. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna click on this option which says transitions, and here you are, have a lot of different types of transitions. For example, let's select the circle into out. So this is just gonna make, you know, when this video changes over to this, what we want is that this should close down in like a circle and then this new video should open up again in a circle. So that can be like one of the transitions. So for example, let's say if I pull this down here, now what you have to do is you can, you have to pull this on this track only, okay? So for example, I can pull this here and first let me just show you how this will look. Okay, so right now actually the opposite is gonna happen. Okay, so we want the opposite, right? We want this video to close into a circle, for example. So what you can do is uh, just on the left side of this transition, you'll find this down arrow, which is clickable. And if you click and you can click on reverse 
transition. So if I click on that, and now if I run this again, just see. Right, now the only issue is this is too long. So what we can do is you can just drag these down. By the way, if you ever want to just shorten a clip, you can just do it by dragging also. For that, make sure that this magnet icon is uh, selected, which is called as snapping, okay? And it's just very, it's an easy way to shorten or, you know, make something longer. And now, so what I want is I want this transition to end right where this clip is ending. So you'll see it sticks on its own. It's just, if I just drag it close to the end, you get this line and it just sticks. That's happening because of the snapping function, which is very uh, important in these cases. So again, just make sure this is ending here. And then what I want is I want another transition here, like the circle. And when the new clip starts, I want the reverse that it should open up. So this time we can just drag it like this, the actual transition. We don't have to reverse it. Remember, this was how it was. So now make sure that this is at the end of the second clip. And let's just run this. So this transition is finishes and the new transition just the new video opens up with the transitions. You can play around with these uh, things also. To be very honest, as a beginner, you know, uh, like for example, in Premiere Pro, these are too easy to use. Here it's slightly more manual to use because you have to just do these changes. So as a beginner, it's up to you. You must have seen my courses. I hardly ever use transitions, you know, it's just a plain cut and it's okay. But I just thought that I'll show you, you have some additional effects also like uh, you have things like you can put a blur on the video and all I've actually never used it so uh, it's not going to be too important but let's just see how this will look yeah you can see the moment I put this blur so we've got that blur and I think I can remove this effect also so maybe at some point you want to blur something in your video or something so you can use this blur option and you have some other options also you can brighten up the video and all these things okay you can make it more saturated you can crop the video but right now I want it to be proper so I'm just going to remove this effect so you can click the effect comes right here just right click on it remove effect and it comes back to normal now what we want to do is we want to just add the video file that we have which is the YouTube music library file we got the got which is shattered parts the song so I'm just going to drag it on a separate track like this okay and let's just now this is song is too long so what I can do is either I can go all the way and shorten this or I can just first of all zoom out of this timeline a bit that will make it easy and just drag it to the length of these videos okay something like this and just zoom. that should be good and okay so we've got a song let's play this video now Okay, now let's say I felt that the song is slightly less in volume, then you can do the same thing. You can right click on it, go to volume and entire clip and you can, you know, just increase it. Like I can click on level 100% or if you want, you can even reduce it. I, can, I think level 100% should be, in my opinion, uh, it should keep actually the volume constant or whatever you got the clip from, but you can decrease uh, the volume. Okay, I'll also try to see, I haven't used this that much, uh, how exactly to raise the volume, if that's possible in uh, OpenShot, I'll probably mention it when we're uh, editing our uh, videos, uh, just later on, the videos like screencasting and all, where it might be important. So I'll just mention it at that particular point. But right now, uh, just teaching you the absolute basics here. So let's say this is what we want. This is, you know, we're kind of done with what we wanted here. Then what you can do is you can just, the last thing you'll have to do is just go to export video, this red button here. And it's gonna ask you which file do you wanna save it at, like which folder. So let's say right now, just for ease, I'm just gonna select uh, desktop. Then it's gonna ask you what uh, target do you have. And then you can just leave all these things the same. Just only thing is under video profile, we want this to be in full HD video, okay? That's usually what you'll be using for your online courses also. Because remember, even when we were shooting, we were mainly concentrating on full HD videos, whether from our DSLR or whether from our uh, phone or even in your screencasting software, there will be options. By default, it will usually be set to 1920 to 1080, which is the full HD resolution. But otherwise, you can even in your screencasting software, the recording that the software is making for you, you can change the resolution for that. You will keep that at full HD so that that recording looks very sharp, okay? And I'm just going to select HD 1080p and 24 fps is fine here yeah, okay and then i can just click on export video 
And once this process finishes, this rendering process, we just get this whole video that we just made. All right, so the process is just about to finish and let's check out our videos. I'm gonna click on done here, go to my desktop where we have this video. Now our transition will kick in soon. The audio sounds good. Like I said, I'll talk about raising the volume also in case that is needed. I'll just see how that is done in the future videos. And boom. So you can see it's pretty easy to just create a very basic video. From the next video onwards, we are going to tackle more of our videos, screencasting and all these things, syncing and all. It's going to get a bit challenging, but the overall way to do things will still remain the same. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.